<laughs> hey everyone, I'm here with Jason Prawl from the Human Longevity Project. Jason, if you'd like to introduce uh, just yourself and just what you're, uh, what you're up to with the Human Longevity Project. And uh, again, I know I told you this before, but man, I'm so honored to be a part of that. Of course, man. It's, it's, it's been a great, um, great journey, great project for us. We're, you know, the Human Longevity Project is a upcoming docu-series, a uh, nine-part docu-series on looking at, at longevity from a perspective of lifestyle, right? So what are some of the things we, we do, we eat, um, how we behave, our environmental aspects um, that contribute to optimal health, which results in longevity, right? I think that's a big thing that people, they have a, there's a misperception that, that, that longevity is something you shoot for, that you, that you go after. And really what we're looking at is it's more of a result, right? It's a, it's a result of doing the right things, um, you being in the sort of skincare industry, and um, it, it's, it's about using the right products, right? Avoiding the toxins, avoiding all this crap that we mm -hmm. see in our modern environment. And one of the cool things that we've done is we've gone to these blue zones, right? Okinawa uh, in Japan, we've gone to Ikaria in Greece, and Sardinia in Italy, and Costa Rica, and we're looking at their lifestyles, the way that they live, their environments. And my gosh, it's so it's so different than what we see here in in the U.S., particularly in the big cities, right? So, um, can you can you describe what a blue zone is to the audience? Yeah, yeah. So, so the blue zones were were um, it was a concept that was originated by uh, Michel Poulin, who's a is a, a Belgian demographer, and he recognized this area in Sardinia that had a, a an inordinate number of centenarians, right? There, there's a huge concentrations of people making it to 100 years old that was sort of an anomaly. And so he wanted to figure out, you know, A, is it an anomaly? Is it something that's unique? Mm -hmm. And if so, what were the causes and how did this happen? And so he looked at this and, and, and verified all these ages and, and um, went to all the records and, and sure enough, it was something uh, of an anomaly. And he sort of had a blue pen or a blue pencil and he sort of circled this area and shaded it in blue and called it oh, a blue zone. Oh, okay. So yeah. he, he was sort of the first one to determine this a blue zone in the National Geographic um, and Dan Butner sort of took that and ran with it and said, okay, can we find any other areas around the world where we have these blue zones? And so um, kind of a cool concept that came yeah. out. And the interesting part about that is there's different parts around the world that they identified that had different diets, right? They had different lifestyles and um, different cultures. So, you know, you can look at that and go, what are some of the commonalities that we can identify with some of that? And, you know, Interestingly enough, there was no real blue zone in the United States. Right? We didn't have an area. So they kind of manufactured one in, in Loma Linda, California that they called the blue zone, but it wasn't really a blue zone. Um, and so how can we do this? How can we create a blue zone? Can we create a blue zone in the U.S.? Um, but more importantly, I think, how can we take those lessons and apply those to our modern life and apply those to improve the health of, our, of ourselves individually, collectively, the community, um, our and loved ones, a, and, and, and you know, it's every, I mean, just affecting everyone that we come across. I'm that, sorry. 100%. Me. No, and that, that's the point, right? The point right. is, isn't this selfish act of longevity? Oh, yeah. How can I get to 100, but how can we improve the lives of all of us, around, uh, all of the, those around us? And, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting, as we were interviewing Andy here, one of the things that you mentioned, I think, just in conversation was um, the connection aspect that you yeah. adopted with your family and um, being outside and being amongst people around you and how much of a of a dopamine rush that gives you. Right? Oh, it yeah. makes you feel alive. Absolutely. I mean, connection, food, music. I mean, those are my biggest opiates right there. Going out, having a good time with friends and, and just, you know, that's, that's awesome. I mean, traveling, food, I mean, it just wakes me up. I mean, I had a dinner the other night I was dragging throughout a long day. I mean, it was like 8 or 9 p.m. And I was, it woke up every cell in my body. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do now? Like, now I'm fired up. I can go work out again. You know what I mean? So it's just the food that we put into our bodies, the connection, the laughs that we have, the music, the kind of anything that can give you goosebumps. I mean, it's just, it's just creating that experience and just kind of living off that. And it sounds like, I remember you said uh, purpose. So give me or tell the audience the example of that that sweet lady from I think you said Okinawa. <laughs> yeah, Okinawa. Yeah, so she was, she was ninety seven, and uh, we went and interviewed her, and um, it it blew me away. I mean, I think a lot of times in the U S. we don't know what ninety seven can look like, right? We mm -hmm. we have this picture in our head because the, the the elders that we've seen in our communities, you know, ninety seven if they get there don't look so hot, right? Yeah, they, they just rounded back, kind of inching around. Probably don't have their cognitive function. 
Well, this lady was a total inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, she was walking two to three kilometers a day to go see her friend. She uh, was outside barefoot a lot of the time. She was taking care of her own garden. At 95, she was climbing her orange tree to pick oranges. What? Before her daughter said... I didn't... I didn't yeah. That's awesome. Before her daughter said, Mom, like, you shouldn't do that. You know, you can get hurt. And she's like, you know, like, I'm fine, you know? Yeah. So she was chopping down sugar cane by herself. She was um, gardening. She was hoeing the garden, tilling up the soil. Um, she had this thing that not only was she outside growing her own food, which was insanely healthy, but mm -hmm. she was... She had a purpose. She woke up every day. This was her plot of land. This was the thing that, she, that kept her going. So right. having the, that little thing, right? We think of purpose as this big, huge, monumental Elon Musk type thing, right? Yeah. But it can really be something as simple as having your garden and taking care of your land. So right. like, totally mind blowing. She could read the newspaper without glasses. She at was, ninety seven. That's true. She she, I mean, she was bright. She was um, very eloquent. She she. She sharp, had, just right there? Just, I mean, beyond sharp. I mean, totally, totally blowing me away. So this is what I think we can be, right? And right. Um, I think we need to see those examples. I mean, we had a 104-year-old in Sardinia that was riding a bicycle, um, you know, when, when we were there. So That is so cool. It's mind-blowing. Yeah, that's why I was really, I, I love being a part of this documentary because, I, I mean, last night I watched... Uh, so the wheat, some wheat uh, documentary obviously wasn't that great because I can't even <laughs> think of it right now. That and some sugar uh, documentary, sugar maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there are all these. It's like all right, cool. But this right here, I've never seen one on longevity. Centenarians, to me specifically, are have always been of interest to me. I've, it's a, it's a, it's it's something that I actually picked up a skincare, uh, just kind of hack from a centenarian, from a friend of mine who told me uh, they learned it from a centenarian, of putting on a good essential oil, say sea buckthorn, cacao butter, um, something before you go into a sauna. So before you go into a sauna, opening up the pores and then introducing an essential oil to kind of, uh, you know, hydrate that area but condition the skin. I do that as much as I can. It's kind of hard to carry around a little bottle of my moisturizer when I work out but because you know, my sauna's at the gym. But... That there are these little things here and there. They'll give you clues. Absolutely. And obviously, they're successful at life and living uh, such a, a long life. And, and walking around, I mean, that's what I want for my, my loved ones. Yeah. That's what I want. I want my mom to be firing around, climbing around, you know, orange trees. Mom, that's what I expect from you. All right? Well, and, Dad, too. And Dad, you're going to be, you know, propping around. Get ready. This, this is the cool thing, too, right, is that that's where the wisdom lives, right? In the 94-year-olds, in the 98-year-olds. And so, you know... We have life experience that can teach us, you know, we're both 36, but that's a limited life experience, right? You, so mm -hmm. as we get older, I think that's what we're missing here in the U.S. in particular, in the Western cultures. We're missing that wisdom that comes from being 95, but that comes from right. being to 100. And we asked, you know, um, a number, 20 plus people in the Blue Zones, you know, what their biggest, advi the biggest advice that they could give us yeah. um, to live a long, healthy, happy life. and. Almost all of them, if not all of them, said to maintain good relationships with those around you nice. and don't hold any grudges. Um, and so w when you hear that from so many people that mm -hmm. have made it to 80, 90, 100, mm -hmm. it kind of resonates, right? I mean, all of a sudden, Absolutely. the things that you and I think don't compare to that wisdom that they carry with them. And so, you know, I think this is the value of, of getting, of, of increasing longevity is to, to, to hold on to that wisdom and to be able to share yeah. that with people like us, right? I mean, right. it's made such an impact, I think, on me, and hopefully we can share this sort of message from these people because they're the ones that figured it out. They're the ones who've experienced this stuff. And so, um, you know, I, again, I think I'm going to share this with my audience. So I know your audience knows oh, yeah. all, all the things that you do, but tell me specifically the, the products that you've experienced in the healthcare industry and in the, in the, the facial creams and all these masks and all these things, what are some of the toxic crap that you've found in these products that you think people really need to be aware of and, and avoid as much as possible? So when, when you look at uh, an average moisturizer, uh, a shampoo, a soap, a body, a body wash, whatever it may be, you know, makeup, uh, there's so many toxic products out there. And I'm going to tell you to look at the fragrance the preservatives and the, the different, I mean, three or four different types of alcohol in a product, three or four, I mean, benzyl, cetyrol, I mean, isopropyl, 
These are three different kinds of alcohol in there. I think there's another one that I'm missing out on in, in one product that I recently looked at. It's a number one uh, selling night cream on the or uh, anti aging cream on the planet. Anti get, anti-aging. anti-aging. Complete bullshit. Yeah, and it's accelerating the aging process because not only did they have those the alcohol that just it doesn't serve you. It does not serve you whatsoever. Um, there are some people that say it, it helps uh, that with absorption of certain actives in the in the ingredient decks. And there's something to be said for that with an organic, maybe one, uh, I think it's benzyl material, I'm not sure, but to have four different types of alcohol in a, in a common skincare product that you use daily, it's just, you're just drying out your skin. And then combining that with a filler, glycerin. I mean, if, you're just, if you see glycerin in the second or third ingredient deck, which is almost every product, not, I mean, I don't want to, you know. So, and sodium like, benzoate. Sodium one, benzoate. And that's a what? Is a that's a preservative. BHT. Phenoxyethanol, potassium sorbate, citric acid. Um, so this is crap that they put in there that doesn't so, has no benefit to you, but it's, no. it's benefiting the product and their their shelf life and all the crap that they're doing from a product standpoint. Right, and so when you have huge brands and you have huge scale that you have to reach, you you need to keep it in warehouses and on shelves for all over the world. I get that. I get it. I I'm, I just I, I you know in my own recovery when I was trying to just be you know, as healthy as possible. I didn't want, I, I just, I would look up. Luckily, there's an app out there. Think yeah. Dirty. Think Dirty, it's an app. You can get it on your phone and you can just scan ingredient decks and then they're going to point out certain government recognized carcinogens that are in your ingredient decks of the products uh, that you eat or products that you use and then the food that you eat. I believe they do food as well. But just, man, there's so much information out there and I just became very aware of just, well, why is yellow five, yellow five, yellow six? Two different artificial colors, parfum, which is fragrance. I see titanium dioxide. Titanium colors. dioxide. That's that's in a lot of whitener um, type things, right? Yeah, it's, that's for um, it's in a lot of uh, sunscreens. But uh, I just encourage you to uh, to the audience out there to really do their research and, and focus on what is serving them. The active ingredients. Make your own. I mean, that's how I made my night cream. Just in the cast iron pan, just melting down cacao butter, beeswax. Uh, Sea buckthorn oil, a little chlorella. I mean, it just became my own little creative outlet. Do the same or, or work with a brand or buy from a brand that really um, just has that same mission and that ingredient integrity of just bringing clean products that serve you. Well, I mean, you can get the better here's, you know, results from stuff from the earth. Here's you know? the cool thing. So I would actually recommend first people make their own. And here's why. Because first of all, you know what's going to go into it, mm -hmm. right? And then secondly, you're going to realize how hard it is <laughs> eventually. Yeah. And I don't mean to say that you can't do it, but it actually will help you understand, okay, it may be beneficial to buy a product like Altera. In other words, mm -hmm. this is kind of a pain in the ass, and, it's, and, it's, and the ingredients that you use will be sort of expensive. And so you're going to realize that when you pay $35 for this night cream or whatever the cost is, you're now going to realize where yeah. that cost is coming from because the ingredients that you're buying, which are natural, which are organic, etc., uh -huh. when you make your own, they do... Add up, and so all of a sudden yeah. you start to see a benefit. In other words, you you can you can justify the cost because mm -hmm. you know that the ingredients that are so good for you are kind of expensive. They do cost to have that quality, right? So right, but I, it's, I, I've made my own, and I'm like, yeah, it's just not as good. And hey, period, it's just not as good. I got I got I'm gonna go get my night cream. This is my my first <laughs> one that I ever made. <laughs> so I will tell the audience that's still around. I've done this. I've, I've used uh, all natural ingredients, um, cacao butters, um, you know, olive oils, and there is a science to this shit. Oh, I mean, it is, it's a little tricky, but there's nothing like using those natural ingredients that your skin just feels so much better using. So look at this. I'm so glad we didn't lose this on the move. Look at that. Oh my God. So this is my first chunky little night cream from that <laughs> same not. cast iron pan. It's actually it's not bad. Great. I mean... Yeah, I mean, it's sea buckthorn. There's a little manuka honey in there. I mean, I, I'll still put it on right now. I mean, <laughs> this is five years into the making. Wait, maybe a little bit more, five, six. I'll still put it on. Anyway, but this is this is like, uh, this was the base, my prototype of what's now the night cream. I mean, look at that. Obviously, it looks a little bit better and uh, definitely not as chunky, but that's the whole idea is I didn't, I couldn't find anything on the shelf of the really good health and beauty aisles with, uh, without uh, the... Every product that I saw had some type of hole in it, whether right. it was a preservative, alcohol, things that didn't serve my body. I, I just I got to know my ingredients. It, it became an obsession of mine, which led me into what I'm doing now. But I, I just encourage the audience. If, it's just, it was a creative outlet for me. I love doing it. But even sure. if, you, if, if, if you don't, 
there are the thing is the green beauty movement is becoming very it's very huge. popular now and there are some kick-ass brands out there not only i mean there are a lot of good people that are moving in that direction because what you put on your body is going to be absorbed into your bloodstream so it has to have a purpose you it's know? the largest organ right it's your, your skin's your largest organ you want to treat it like another mouth and and here's the here's the thing too i think there's a philosophy that underlies your product whether it's overt or it's or it's sort of underneath the surface here but the skin and the body have their own natural capacity to regenerate, to rebuild, to look beautiful, to look young, etc. Yeah. Yeah, granted, we lose some of that function over time, but you don't need other products to give you that, right? The products, the things that you're using in your creams and in your your products mm -hmm. are benefiting the body's natural process. They enhance, they they upregulate certain functions of the skin, right? So they're assisting in the natural ability of the skin. I think that is a key component that it's not the ingredients that are doing something for us externally. They, if they're not, if they're toxic, they are harming the ability of the skin. They're, they're inhibiting function. If you have a natural product, it's going to assist the natural function of the skin. I think that is sort of the underlying right. philosophy of some of these things that you're using. You know, beeswax and these these essential oils that you're using, and these natural olive oil. I mean, these things are enhancing our ability. Um, from the skin layer to, right. to to do the function that your your body already knows how to do. Right, right. And then when, when you when you load it up with with toxins, you you know you can, and then it, it gets absorbed into your bloodstream within seconds. And then now you're potentially damaging your vital uh, you know internal organs. You know your the your, livers and the kidneys just get absolutely your, obliterated by that stuff. Endocrines. I mean, it's just uh, you know you have to be very aware of uh, just very harmful ingredients. I mean, it's just uh, the BHT. The good thing is, I mean, that there are, you know, not only the Think Dirty app, but I mean, it just got, the, the, a lot of information uh, is coming out on these extremely harmful ingredients that, that you put on your skin that can damage the internal. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think like, um, oh, the with the deodorants. Oh, yeah, that's that funny. close to the breast. I mean, I think like the, the aluminum and a lot of deodorants and the fluoride and toothpaste. I mean, sodium lauryl sulfate in a lot of hair care products. That it's just a foaming agent. Uh, fluoride. I mean, geez. Finally, the government uh, recognized that as a carcinogen. Yep. Yep. And uh, does a extreme amount of damage. Get yourself a nice shower filter. Clean out that chlorine. Remove a lot of those heavy metals and those toxins from. You know, we shower daily. These are things we have to take. Pay attention to the detergents that you. That you use and the, and and get a nice organic clean one from from Whole Foods. It's fourteen dollars, but it's huge. Yeah, and it's going to last you. I mean, that these are these are clothes we wear daily, and these are you know your, your pores are going to be absorbing some of the toxins from the Tide, the Downy, these harsh uh, you know products that are just they smell great, sure, but that that fragrance is irritating the skin. It, par parabens, stearates. I mean, it's just well, and, like and the thing on. is with with the blue zone stuff. I mean. If you think about yeah. what they were using in Sardinia in 1960, right? Right. Which, if you're a centenarian at this point, you were, you know, you were an adult in 1960. So they weren't using this stuff. They didn't have this stuff, right? So mm -hmm. when we look at what's contributing to their long life and their vibrant health mm -hmm. in their 90s, well, a lot of it is due to the fact that they weren't exposed to a lot of these things. They weren't using these products. So what do they use? I mean, so when, say you go to Sardinia, Sardinia, and what do they do for for their skin? What, what do they cook with? What do they uh, and it's different region by region, but I will. They probably just use olive oil. They, right? they use olive oil in in and olive oil can actually withstand uh, a, a good high temperature, believe mm -hmm. it or not. Um, mm -hmm. Especially the, the olive oils that they're using, which are cold pressed, which are like right there, unfiltered, they're, they're, probably. They're yeah, right there. they're literally pressing them themselves, so they're they can withstand the heat better than I think most people recognize. But olive oil, they use mm -hmm. um, lard in Costa Rica, so um, a lot of times you know, the pig fat and that type of thing that we use that to cook with. Which Tallow? Absolutely. So oh, yeah. They're using more natural products in, from a food standpoint, and, and they just don't use the skincare that, that we did. They, their soaps were, were made with natural lye. and I mean, everything is more pristine in these environments. And so we don't have quite that luxury, I don't think. So we have to be more intentional. We have to be more mindful of the things that are out there and the things that we're using. And mm -hmm. I, I, I truly believe that the biggest toxic, we, you know, people talk about the harmful water and the harmful air and mm -hmm. everything that's in our environment. You know, to some degree, we have a hard time controlling the air, right? We can't, there's nothing I can do day in and day out to really improve the air quality around me, yeah. but I can control what I put on my, my scalp. I can control what I put in my in my laundry. I can control what I put on 
um, in my teeth, you know, when I brush my teeth. I can control mm-hmm. these things. Right. And you mentioned a lot of these things, and I think this is the this is the big concept that I that I keep going back to is how many of these things are we using every day? 20, 30, 50 products? Right. And then we think, especially with women, women have a hard, harder time because, you mm-hmm. know, makeup and hair products, they're, they're sort of this, um, you know, our culture has, has placed an importance on that for whatever reason. And so I think it's, it's more important for women to look at this stuff and really be mindful because, I mean, you can be using upwards of 50 products every single day. And I think especially our women are... Women are naturally more sensitive because they're the ones that bear children, right? I mean, they have to be right. more sensitive to their environment. So they're sort of designed that way, yeah. and they're taking the brunt of this, I think, and that's not a good trend. So um, it just 50 products a day over the course of 30 years, what's that going to do? I mean, it's going to yeah. result in, in issues, right? And, and, and then you combine that with environmental pollutants, and then you combine that exactly. with baking, baking that in, the sun hitting that area, hitting that toxic makeup, and just... Ah, man. I, so, I just, so let me ask you something. A yeah. lot of people debate sunscreen and these type of things. You are an actor, Molly. You do. You have to sort of be concerned with this stuff mm-hmm. on top of just you wanting to be healthy. So right. what's your approach when it comes to the sun? You're in Southern uh, California yeah. where it's very sunny. So do you get sun? Do you get, are you, do you be, mi- are you mindful of it? Do you get in the shade? Do you wear sunscreen? What's your approach? So I, I throw on my serum and I'll go outside. I mean, I, I'm pretty active, so I like to run outside. I like to, uh, you know, I lay out. I get 15 to 20 minutes sun every single day that it's out. And it's just for mood. I've seen mood benefits. I like the little, I like getting a little color um, as well. It's just, a, it, it accentuates uh, the absorption of the sun, sun rays, my little serum that I have. And it gives me a little, little tan, little color. But also it's just uh, from the, I mean, there's something about the rays. Obviously, vitamin D content. You but just feel it. I feel it. Yeah. It just it wakes me up. I mean, it's what sun, you know, it's what grows plants. It, you know, <laughs> it's it's the the chlorophyll that that accentuates the, the chlorophyll and the green content pigment and, and the grass. So and do you wear sunscreen? Oh, sorry. So to answer the question, yeah. So I uh, no, I don't. I, I I do. I just do a little bit of cacao butter and a little bit of my serum every now and then. I wear a hat if if it's if I'm going to a game or if I'm be out for hours. Uh, just to cover it out, or so cover, mindful cover not skin to get up too much. Not yeah, I'm mindful not to get too much. But you don't wear sunscreen because why? What's the main? It, what, oh. what do you fear about the sunscreen over, especially for long term? Well, so if there are a couple of decent sunscreens out there, I like so uh, Keys is a brand K E Y S Solar RX. They use a non nano zinc, which uh, blocks. A little, so if you're going to be out in the sun, say surfing or whatever, and a lot for an extended period of time, say hours, three or four or five hours. I would reapply that particular brand. That's the only one that I would I would trust right now. I'm not going to make a, a sunscreen with Alatura, I don't think. I mean, it's just there's the titanium dioxide, the zinc. I mean, it's just it, they're they're minerals, but it's, it's just it's, it's better something. than the chemicals, but it's not still not ideal for the skin. Right, and and I, I have to ask you, like, say, when you go to these, they're not. I mean, are they wearing sunscreen? <laughs> no, right. I mean, we, we have to realize that sunscreen wasn't even invented until basically post-World War II, right? Before this sort of chemical revolution mm. came about. So right. um, sunscreen didn't exist unless it came from a natural source. And so, um, I mean, take a look at, at some of these other areas. They, they're using, you know, they're using clothing to protect their skin, right? I mean, right. Loose, loose clothing. Um, they use big hats. I mean, right. I think okay. for yeah. me, this is just a more natural way. I mean, first of all, it forces you to be mindful, right? People like you and I, light skin. And we have a Northern European background, of course. Mm-hmm. There wasn't lots of harsh UV in that environment sort of for our heritage. Mm-hmm. And so we're now in Southern California, which is sort of non-native to our heritage. But So we have to be more mindful of this stuff. And I think, to me, it, that's where it all starts is mindfulness. And mm-hmm. be, just being mindful of the sun. I can't get too much sun. But if, but I, at the same time, I don't want to fear it. And I, and I know that it's good for me. So that's just been my approach. You know, I think yeah. um, the sunscreen movement, I think, is is not proven to be beneficial overall. Um, but I think even more than that, do we really need it? Do I need to buy it? You know, I mean, I'm saving money by not buying it. Mm-hmm. I'm more mindful of the sun. Um, so I'll get enough, uh, particularly in the morning. That's when I see right. the benefit, yeah. right? So the, the, out of the midday. But, but also just stepping into the shade. I mean, is it really that difficult, you know? No. Um, to, yeah. to just apply good sun habits. I think that's... To me, that's what's been so um, beneficial over the long time is you just, you just you learn how to be in the sun, I think, as opposed to just going out there and baking and reapplying and reapplying and going to the water and then reapplying again. And, you know, you're sticky, you're oily, it just feels like shit. And, you know, 
and what are you really doing long term? Especially, if, especially what if you're you're rubbing in? It just breaks my heart to see like these really dense. Uh, we all know, you know, copper tone, Neutrogena. I mean, ingredient decks that have 50 ingredients in there. That oh man, I mean, just uh, when the environmental impact of that, right? So that's that's right. got to go somewhere. Somewhere. Right? So down the drain into our water, uh, you know, into our ocean. I mean, it's just it, that's something to be, you know. Uh, you know, aware of as well. Just uh, you're not only not only damaging yourself, but it's going into our. Uh, you know, it's, where where does it go from there? Into and our I, water and system. And I think I don't know if it was an environmental working group, but some environmental health organization was looking at the impacts of sunscreen on the coral population in certain areas of like Australia and really? and um, the Caribbean and these types of things. And and they they contributed a fairly decent amount of the coral die off to. Things like sunscreen and these chemicals that are ending up directly from people that are going into the ocean. Where I mean, these wow. things are these things are toxic at such yeah. small levels, right? Yeah. I mean, parts per billion. These things are, are extremely toxic, and so um, you know, I don't know how what that level is and, and what to do about that, other than to not use those products. I mean, mm -hmm. that just seems to be the obvious solution here is to use natural products, use the shade, use right. smart habits to. Um, to sort of not fear the sun, but also be respectful of how much sun we, we really need, right? Right, and so just a little, just personal opinion here from my formulation from astaxanthin, mm -hmm. great topical, uh, raspberry seed oil. Uh, coconut, I wouldn't put on the face, but for the body, decent. Um, these are mild, and I'm not making claims. I'm, you know, you, you, gotta be, you gotta be careful with the SPF levels. A lot of people say, oh, SPF 30 with uh, astaxanthin. I, I, that's that's part of the reason why I'm not going to be making a, a, a sunscreen anytime soon because I, I just I don't want to make those claims. Obviously, we can we can get the studies done for my my uh, my chemist and and get that. But I, I, if you want to make your own at home, beeswax, cacao butter, raspberry seed oil. Um, sea maybe, buckthorn's great. Right? Sea buckthorn's amazing. Yeah. Um, let's see, a little cacao butter, beeswax, bee propolis. I mean, I, it's just it's great stuff. I mean. There, there's so many great things from from the earth that, that provide a nice little vibrant, subtle protection from the sun, but also assist in moisturizing your skin as well. And they provide benefits as opposed to the harsh, um, toxic uh, ingredients. That, man, I wish I had one here in front of me. No, it's just it's just about integrating with nature, isn't it? I mean, it's just, absolutely it's, it seems yeah. pretty, pretty straightforward. Now, I like what you said too about just you know hopping in the shade. <laughs> it's not rocket science. I mean, yeah, just getting in the shade, hat, you know, get, absorbing a little sun here and there, but just being very aware. I mean, umbrellas, we got so many tools, right? I know. It's like, it shouldn't be that difficult. And, and also, from, from a diet aspect, nutrition, just, you Huge. know, dealing with, uh, you know, the, the mitochondria of the cell, making the healthiest cell, skin cell, through nutrition, through the broccoli, through the sweet potatoes, loaded in, you know, beta carotene, vitamin A, uh, vitamin C, I, hyaluronic I see the acid. Grains, the grains being grains, one right? Of Here's what's cool about about chlorophyll. We actually, by digesting and assimilating chlorophyll mm -hmm. um, through our microbiota, they actually produce and communicate to our mitochondria that actually allow us to absorb more light without harming our DNA. So greens can actually allow us to absorb more light without harmful effects. What are your favorite greens? Um, That's awesome. I, I love I love um, spirulina, um, chlorella. So ah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a um, you know, and you, use, you can use these in powdered smoothies. That's generally how I, yeah. I consume those. But um, I'm just a uh, any kind of salad, right? I usually mm. make a big salad of all kinds of different vegetables. Oh, yeah. Consuming greens that way. Um, cucumber, romaine. Oh, cucumbers are a, a go-to oh, yeah. for me actually. Yeah. Um, cucumbers are alkalizing. Yeah, it's it just. So mild and it's I don't know it's refreshing. It's mostly yeah. water, right? And we have yeah. we now understand the science of water. So there's structured water, believe it or not, in fruits and vegetables. This is part of the benefit they can oh, really hold okay. energy. So uh, we get into that in our docu series. We talk about the, the structuring aspects of water. We got the one of the most um, recognizable water researchers on the planet named mm -hmm. Gerald Pollack talking about the science of water chemistry and, and the structuring nature of water that's in plants and mm -hmm. within us. So. Um, you know, and then I think the most harmful thing that I've found when it comes to skin and diet, the, the, the relationship there in the sun, is polyunsaturated fatty acids. So PUFAs, right? So these things, mm -hmm. you know, we have omega-3s and omega-6s, which are, are, tend to be beneficial, but, um, you know, some of these, these other omegas and, and um, 
you know, these seed oils particularly, right? So, you know, um, cottonseed oil and rapeseed oil and um, canola oil, you know, these things you find in processed foods, extremely bad for health of the skin, particularly when you get in the sun. Right. Um, pumpkin seed, I've heard, is legit. Um, internally, externally, that, but, you know, that, that, that is, you know, not to contradict your point. I mean, I, I think that's the only no, one that I would, but, that I would, uh, but I mean, sesame seed, the, I mean, these things are, it can be beneficial. There's, there's different levels of polyunsaturated fatty acids right. in a lot of this stuff, but I think more of it is the oils, right? So in other words, if you're consuming, um, you know, the actual seed as opposed to concentrated seed oils that are probably already rancid. Right, right. That, that are that are so easily broken down and that are in these sort of processed foods. Right? Super refined. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that's really the key here is the refined processed oils that I think are so damaged by heat, by by pressure, um, by oxygenation. Right. Yeah. By, by yeah. UV. Right. I know your your bottles are heavily protected. Yeah. Um, you know, very dark dark glass. So, you know, it's those type of things when the, the oils become so rancid, they literally can oxidize at the cellular level, which. Again, that's the key. Once it's oxidized and then you rub it into it, now it's, it's creating a toxic... Uh, yep. Absolutely. For the cellular level, right? So this, yep. is, this is the key, I think, So for, for skin health. So, um, you know, for my audience, when we share this, tell, tell us where they can find your products, because I will say... Sure. And actually, tell them, what do you think, that, that if they were to start somewhere, and, and let's say they want to try out a tour, what's the one product you think they can dip their toe, give it a shot, um, and really see... Just find a... You know, a daily a moisturizer is, is key. Okay. A daily moisturizer is key. Our, with our, our moisturizer, it's 95.4% certified organic. We bottle it in maroon glass, propolis, a uh, little uh, sea buckthorn in there, lang lang, carrot seed, calendula, primrose oil, a little royal jelly, cacao butter, beeswax. I mean, yeah, it's all this stuff. is... Holy oh, shit. no, it's me. I mean, it's just... it's Yeah, I'm, I love... I mean, it's it's a... It's a total creative outlet for me. I, I love formulating products. But yeah, if you were to start off, whether it's my brand or someone else, I would just really, I love bee products. They're so molecularly complex. I mean, scientists are finding out more and more about just, uh, just the activity of the propolis, beeswax, good manuka honey in my night cream that has a K factor of 16, which really helps heal. I would make a little paste on my scar. You can kind of see it right there. I used to be like a, rain, a railroad track on wow. the side of my face. But uh, I just stayed extremely consistent with it, just hydrating the skin. You know, whether it's if you're in a drier area, say Arizona or Colorado. Uh, Colorado is using my night cream during the day. It really does help with, with just kind of the elasticity of the skin and feeding that area, which is really good um, essential oils that we're deprived of. And as we age, we're, we're, you know, we lose a lot of that elasticity in our skin. That hydration is key. So, well, and like, I think what the, re the main benefit that I think that why this actually... If we were living in natural environments with very clean water and great soil and great air quality, I don't think we would need as much skin product help as, as we do in our environment. But with the chlorine and the fluoride right. and the shitty water, mm -hmm. um, I, we just need it more. You know, we need, well, unfortunately, we need some assistance. So I think this is where and why some of these things can be beneficial and why, why we might necessarily benefit from them as opposed to some of these more natural cultures that they probably don't need, need these things. But mm -hmm. in our environment, it's so toxic and so damaging to, to the surfaces of our body that this is where these things can come into play and right and assist that process. So it was sure. alatura.com, best place oh, to go? Oh, yeah, so it's, um, so it's alaturanaturals.com. That's A-L-I-T-U-R-A-N-A-T-U-R-A-L-S.com. And we can do, uh, I mean, if, if your audience wants to check it out, we can just do... Prawl, or do you want to do human long? We'll do H HLP at a twenty percent discount. If you guys want to check out any of the the products, if not, just uh, this is HLP. a wealth of info. No, H I really appreciate HLP. HLP. Okay, that's gonna be the, the code to get twenty sure. percent off. Twenty percent off HLP, and right. I'll set that up as soon as we uh, get off this. I, and if you yeah. don't take advantage, I think you're silly because uh, well. I mean it's twenty. First of all, 20% off, just try it, right? I mean, I, I don't know. You buy it once, you don't like it, it's too expensive, whatever. Like, but just give it a shot. I think. To me, it's always the it's always a matter of, of experimenting with something and seeing what's what. Oh yeah, you know, and I still do. I mean, you know, you hear certain things. You just take what you want, leave the rest. But there's so 100%. many good things out there. There are a lot of, and we're at a very good time right now. We're not only green beauty, but nutrition, health, wellness. We're in a great uh, area in Southern California where people are becoming more and more uh, aware of what uh, 
what they put onto their body and what they put into their body. So I mean, overall wellness is, is what we're looking for here. I really love what you're doing, man. I'm, I'm really that. honored to be a part of it. I'm serious. Of course. I it's, mean, uh, it's great to have you. I think it's there's so many aspects that, that we want to hit, and you you have such a passion in this area. So I mean, it was a, it was a no-brainer um, when it came to trying to find somebody that can talk about this, this stuff because you're actually doing this, and you have been doing it. You have a reason for doing it. And so... By the way, it's Christmas coming up, so 20% off outdoor. <laughs> I actually am going to jump on that. I'm actually going to use my own code for this. Thanks, uh, thanks man. So uh, that's great. But um, we got to run. We got to end Oh, yeah. You, so, uh, hey, well, to, to happy, uh, to, hey, thank you so much. No, seriously, man. Like, I, I'm a documentary, like, fiend. That's what I, I love watching documentaries and just kind of just learning. But I've never seen anything from the longevity centenarian aspect. I think it's beautiful. It's He's fun. traveling around the world, going to these areas and interviewing these cute, you know, 104, 117, 94, these people that are living. I mean, I want my, my, my family to live forever, you know? And, and I just think it's just so important. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. You want our, our friends and family to, to be around for as long as possible. So check this documentary out. It's going to be amazing. Seriously. May, May 2018 is going to be the, the launch date. We've got a number of other interviews to do. We've got literally some of the the, the microbiome and the, and the gut health is such a critical point. And there's a lot that has just been elucidated in the science over the last year. And we've got literally the top people around the world. We've got Russian scientists and, uh, mm -hmm. and Swiss, Swiss scientists and German scientists. We've got people that you've never heard of, that I've never heard of. And when they get on there and start talking about this stuff, it goes it goes crazy deep. Yeah. And then we've got some of the philosophers of health, you know, people that really understand this stuff, and and just some of the fun names, you know, J.P. Sears and Preston Smiles and oh, uh, Preston, yeah, he's a good dude. Laird Hamilton and you know, nice. Dave Asprey and and Sayer G and Kelly Brogan. Um, we've got some of the coolest people in this film, and nice. it's it's been a, a super fun process. So um, you know, I think. <laughs> We can't wait to wrap it up because <laughs> we're kind of driving ourselves crazy. I'm just stuff, so... Yeah, it's it's cool. going to be fun. And so uh, May 2018. May 2018. Look for that. The website, if you can follow it. It's in, the, um, in the, the post right there. But also, I think it's really important just to reiterate the, the, the key values that a lot of... That everyone said, for the most part, is uh, purpose... Um, and then, uh, hold on, wait, no, no, what was, no, what was the first one you said? Connection. Yeah, dang it. And then what was, what was another? So purpose, connection, um, activity, yeah. you know, just Plant, moving around. Plant-based diet. I think this is not necessarily diet. going vegan, vegetarian. If that's your thing, great. But it's it's not about being so polarized, I think, in this mm -hmm. world. It, it's, it's realizing the value of organic, natural plants that aren't processed, that aren't, you know, um, modified in any way mm -hmm. and really understanding the benefits from those um, and it's so deep it goes so deep and we're going to elucidate how and why the components of plants are mm -hmm. so beneficial to us over the long term but this is the commonality in all these blue zones they all have a heavy plant-based diet they all eat meat um, so it's not a matter of going one way or the other but it's it's understanding that first and foremost organic from the net the earth natural unadulterated um, unadulterated uh, components and that's really it it's simplifying yeah. everything right and it's slowing everything down so um i think you've been on that journey i've been on that journey of of really reducing things and keeping things simple mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be so tricky right right now that and and we can all take take that you know just nice pure uh diet you know keep it simple from a nice natural perspective on you know whether it's skincare products whether it's our nutrition and then, you know, find something that excites you, yeah, you know, get, gets you, you know, a uh, nice little connection, getting some sunlight, moving around, purpose. Uh, and then, yeah, man, I mean, it's it's just, it's really cool to hear those are the key components for longevity. And, you know, I'm just going to continue to be a sponge. I mean, yeah, I learned a lot today. Yeah. I mean, that's badass. And I really, yeah, it's just cool. And, and we explained some of that. So how does purpose actually facilitate health and longevity? Well, we will, we have scientists and and health researchers yeah. and, and, and integrative doctors and these people are explaining how exactly that happens. So um, that's sort of the goal is to elucidate some of this stuff, why it's working, as opposed to just telling you to go do these things. Right. Um, we want to show how and why they work so mm -hmm. that it becomes more powerful becomes, and, and you have the tools, right? So mm -hmm. it's not something that a doctor has to give you health. This is something you already have within you. So that's the main message, that's the main goal. Um, and it should be fun. I mean, this, this, this is a, it's a, it's a film, so it's, it's um, a, a a fun way to tell the story as opposed to sort of reading a research paper, which is quite, quite yeah. boring. I've done enough of that. So 
um, you know, it's it's a more entertaining way to sort of digest this material, and, and we want to show what these blue zones look like. We want to show what these ninety-eight year olds look like, and yeah. hopefully that's inspiring. I mean, it was for me to to see these people. Uh, definitely um, inspiring for me. I can't wait to watch them. Cool. It's really cool. Okay. Something I think about all the time. Seriously, setting errands and all that. I mean, it's just really interested me. Um, but I just I haven't seen anything. That's it's awesome that you're doing it. Cool. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna wrap this, and I'll, well, I'll go through and answer some of this. I'm sure Jason will, you know, fire it up when he has time. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining, and uh, I can't wait for you to see this documentary. We just had an awesome interview, so this is it's a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. See you later, Jason Pro. Take care.